welcome to Sister Talk TV Show. I'm your host, Deetra Kelsey. Today we are going to talk about the last presidential debate 2024 that was aired last Tuesday. With us is our new kid on the block and our returning guest is Mark Edward Dow. Hey Mark, how you doing? I'm doing very well today. Thank you guys for having me. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you. And were you straight from out of? Straight out of Las Vegas. Straight out of Las Vegas. Good to have you. Good to see that you decided to come back. You're Thank always you. welcome here. Also, our returning guests are Dana McBroom. Hey, Dana, how you doing? Hello, hello, hello. I'm Dana McBroom Mano, and I'm happy to be back on Sister Talk. Uh, last week's was discussion was very interesting, informative, and mm -hmm. exciting. So we're back. And also our returning guest as well, Star Davis. Hey, Star, how's Seattle? I know you're out from New York. Oh, from wonderful. Hey, hey, happy to be back here in Sister Talk. Always a pleasure to discuss wonderful topics with you. Okay, so let's talk about people in the news. There's been some passing, uh, really the last two, maybe two, three weeks. Uh, James Earl Jones, oh my gracious. One of my favorite movies really was The Great White Hope. Ah, he did that so well. Others, and Claudine, the others were just voiceover, minute here, two minutes there, coming to America. But he, he was a really fantastic stage and film actor a phenomenal guy uh he did his his, his job and he did it well frankie beverly how, how many remember that cookouts uh family get together yeah. their songs are just so positive frankie beverly mm -hmm. oh i let you go <laughs> come on <laughs> see you can sing that i wouldn't dare try but yes that is definitely the uh and, the barbecue yeah. anthem Yes, and Phil Donahue, we have, we have, yeah, he was pretty bold in talking about uh, what was going on in the Black community, racism, and he even had, had other people host his shows. He was he was doing this, um, this talk show for 29 years. He created mm -hmm. a template, really, for yeah. all the talk shows oh, that came yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. 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 he, he was yeah. the one who really started the uh, audience participation. And so for the Oprah almost got there. She went 25. And you know, one thing I have to say about Phil Donahue, excuse me, my uh, my not being a statue. Um, one thing I have to say about Phil Donahue was he was actually threatened for having the Nation of Islam um, wow. his show. And he went ahead and did that anyway several times. Um, he had Khalid Muhammad. He had Louis Farrakhan. And, you know, during that time, we're talking about the 80s and 90s. That was a really, really risky thing for him to do. Um, he had gay, he had um, KKK members, he had, he was really, really, um, he had a really and, wide breadth. Of, and he wore dresses you know, too. I remember him wearing dresses and skirts on the show. That I don't remember, but I, 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 I remember that. that and was, I don't remember that. And I know, and I know you're going on with the people, but I, uh, I, I didn't want to break in when you were talking about uh, James Earl, but I have a special connection. First of all, uh, he, his his dad lived in my building where I am wow. now, wow. and um, I he was really the basis for me writing my master's thesis, which was African characters in Shakespearean drama, because wow. he was doing he was doing Othello for the Delacorte for the public theater when I was in high school, and I went to every performance i oh would get God. out of school and i would get on the train and get down there and you know sometimes if i had things to do after school i would find a way and i saw every single performance i it, did you see told, him i have to ask did you see him in 86 was it when he was in fences on broadway yes yes, yes. oh my god my yes, dad yes, took yes, me yes. to see that and that was that was definitely life-changing and one of the reasons why I know I wanted to become an actor, um, but powerful, powerful performance. And to actually be able to see him on stage in person, um, yeah, he was a master. That would be the, 
the project for which I remember him most. And the, and the funny he, thing he, is, and the funny God. thing is, is that he had dyslexia. You know, he had and a he had stuttering problem as well. Yes, he had a stuttering problem, and he was dyslexic. And it was so great because he had a manager that got him got uh directors or producers to give him scripts like he didn't have to do cold readings because they said he needed to take it home <clears throat> and my mother used to always laugh about it because she said she would see him at parties and before he took his career took off he would not let anyone out of a party without doing a monologue or doing something he worked on that stuttering and um you know, it's just fantastic. He was a, a tremendous, tremendous artist, you know. Mark, you have anything to say? Yeah, uh, uh, for me, um, James Earl Jones uh, will forever uh, be Darth Vader. Um, mm. that, <laughs> no matter what. And, and, I, and, and he, in, in 2022, he signed a deal with Lucasfilms and re and recorded his voice over and over, same verse, uh, various uh, things. That anytime they make a new rendition of Star Wars, James Earl Jones' voice will be of Darth Vader forever. Nobody oh, else's wow. voice will ever be able to do that. So I, I and and uh, uh, Great White Hope that was that was what really brought me on board for the Great White Hope. But I want to share a story about Frankie Beverly, actually two stories about Frankie Beverly uh, uh, and Mays. Um, I have uh, have had the pleasure of going to concerts for Frankie Beverly and Mays in the 80s. I went to concerts of Frankie Beverly and Mays in the 90s. I went to concerts of Frankie Beverly and Mays in the 2000s. And I even saw Frankie Beverly and Mays in the 2010s. And to be able to have the same sound mm -hmm. 40 years. That means you are one with the band. Back in 1985 or 86, I was up in the Bay Area and we were at this park uh, in Berkeley, California. We playing basketball. There's other folks around, there's people barbecuing and this big ass tour bus pulls up, right? <clears throat> Doors open up, here come, they walk down and, and Frankie, little bitty, five, four, five, five, something like that. He walks up and says, hey, y'all, we wasn't able to do our uh, uh, our practice last night at the hotel. The electricity went out. Do y'all mind if we set up our stuff and just jam for y'all? Y'all keep playing ball and all that. Frankie Beverly and Mays did an impromptu concert over two hours mm, playing uh, all they songs. This was in like 85. Fast forward to um, 2000. I have a story like that that connects with both things that you're saying. That's so 2003 funny. 2003 or 2004, I was in corporate America and I was coming uh, back from uh, Detroit, Calif uh, Detroit, Michigan to California. And I get on my plane, Frankie Beverly and Al Jarreau were sitting oh, really? in first class mm -hmm. when I walked by and I stopped. And I stopped to the people behind me. I said, you guys, I'm, I'm, I apologize, but these are two of the greatest singers ever in the world. And I just want to stop and acknowledge you guys, uh, Al and Frankie Beverly. And I was like, you want an autograph? I'm like, no, I don't need any autographs. I got you guys' music in here. I don't need your signature on anything. I have a quick, I have a quick story that I have to tell about Frankie Beverly. So that, that uh, reminds me a lot of what Mark was saying. So my mother was also very much into astrology and numerology and so much so, in fact, that she and my dad had a bar in Harlem called Signs of the Zodiac Lounge. And one of the people who came in and actually jammed with them, had a, a quick jam session, was Frankie Beverly. And this was in the late 70s, um, or actually, no, let me correct that. This is in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so listen, listening to you tell those stories, it reminded me of, of times Tito Puente used to come in there, Willie Colon used to go in there. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's funny how, um, how he just connected all of us and, and was connected to all of us in many different special ways.
I, I think yeah. yeah. And Mark, I, I'm laughing because Mark, Mark, <laughs> when you told them that you didn't need an autograph, I, it just takes me back to uh, another great African American singer, BB uh, King, mm -hmm. uh, because I was out with him one day. He he kept me with him all day, and it was very funny because when I was leaving him, he gave me a CD, uh -huh. and I was walking out, and he said. Uh, come back here, girl. And I was like, what's going on? He said, give me that CD. He says, I'm going to sign it because it'll be worth more when I'm dead. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, we have somebody that's a ballet dancer. Uh, yes, yes, yes. He passed away at the age of 29. Yes, Michaela. Michaela. De, Michaela. She, she was adopted, but when she was living in the village of Africa, they thought that she was a witch because she had vitiligo or something like that. Yes. And, and, and got her. I know her mother was starved to death. I mean, it was some tribal warfare going on. Her father oh, was killed. But uh, she came her, here and she made a, a difference. You her know? name is Michaela de Prince. Yeah. And she came out of Sierra Leone, out of war torn Sierra Leone, and went to Boston and became a member of the Boston Ballet. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah. there's no news as to how what was her cause of death, but she was only 29 years old. So I, it's the whole. Very sad. It's it's a very sad thing, and if you see her move, it's it's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go online and watch any of the videos of this woman dancing. It was little, and and I'm a person who was a member of the Metropolitan Opera Ballet Company, so uh -huh. I I am very very closely aligned to dance, as you know, Deatra, and I just to see her, it took my breath away, and uh -huh. to hear that she's just gone, she's just gone, and I and um you mentioned before about the the uh, Olympian from Uganda, you know we never know when when our time is up. One two. Wrap it up. Thank you again for participating in this conversation. Uh, thank Zaki Z Starman for creating Sister Talk and also being the executive producer. I'm Dietra Kelsey, co-producer and host, and I'm wishing you peace, love, and remember to stay in the light. Sister, 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 sister.